Welcome, Dadas, um, at home in Kenya, East Africa, Karibuni Sana. This is your show, Dadas Show. We're on KBC Channel 1, of course. That's where you're finding us. And we are really excited to have you. We are so happy to host you. I hope you've been keeping safe, washing your hands, social distancing, taking care of your families, being good to your friends. Today, we wanted to talk about the future of work. This is a big discussion because pre-COVID, there was a way we viewed work and our careers. And post-COVID, things are about to change. So I'm joined by my good friend, Sheila. Sheila Mukoto. Hi, Sheila. Hi. It's hi, been Tony. a whole year. <laughs> yes. Uh, the last time you were here, you were taking on a nice fancy job. How, yes. is it, how has it been going? <laughs> Before COVID. It, it was awesome. Before COVID, it was great. It was great. Yeah, it okay. was really And nice. now, how are you doing? Uh, now things have changed. A lot has changed. I'm not seeing my colleagues as much as, use, as I used to anymore. Okay. Uh, I'm only going to the office when I really have to. So a lot has changed. Most of our meetings, we're having them from uh, a home. So we are doing the virtual meetings. So things have really changed. It's not the same as it was before. Okay. Yeah. So um, as a HR practitioner, I'm mm. sure there's a lot of discussion now about yeah. the future of work. Mm. This is something that I think all of us are going to have to talk about. Mm. So I wanted us to just discuss what was work, what did work look like mm. uh, in 2019? Is it 2019? <laughs> 2020 looks like a, it has been such a long year, like yeah, it has been yeah. a century. <laughs> What, was, what did work look like generally? Because I think if we don't define what it looked like, we will not be able to make the mental leap mm. to where we are going. Mm. What, what basically did work look like? What do you think? Yeah, before COVID, that was up until February, early this year, work was you would wake up, go to the office. In fact, you'd stay on the road for two hours, get to the office, work eight hours. And even if you had nothing to do in the office, you had to punch in stay until five o'clock, that's when you would be released to go or much later, depending on the kind of work you did. So there was a lot of meetings, lots of gatherings, there was a lot of physical meetings that you had to be in the office, you had to be at your desk, you had to, to be there punching in the, the, the work. Mm -hmm. So that's what work was. Mm -hmm. So if there were meetings, you had to be there physically. You had to, to write the minutes, you know, you had to be seen. There was a lot of taking of coffee. We, we had, a, it was a good rapport that we had before COVID. Okay. So I would actually see my colleagues practically every day, Monday to Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like that. I like <laughs> the fact that we spend, do, do, do you know, when I think about it, uh, I, work was a, a lot of travel. There was traveling. Yes. There yes. was going to places. Yes. Coming out of places. People yes. coming in for meetings. Yes. Going. There was a lot, a of, lot of traffic there going was a lot on. Of traffic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> People, there, there was a lot of yeah. movement to and from yeah. and to and mm. from. So post-COVID, what's, what's, what's a big change there? Pauline, a lot has changed. Like you said, eh, before COVID, I would spend two hours on the road yeah. to get to work, two hours on the road going back, and in a matatu that is filled with people, we were, yeah. we were very tight, yeah. tightly seated together. But now, after COVID, everything totally changed. Now, I'm not required to be in the office every day. I'm not required to see my colleagues every day. We now have a rotor. And that is what is happening in most offices. Mm. There is a rota. We sit down every uh, beginning of the week and decide what needs to be done. Then we prepare and say, okay, just two people need to be in the office. So that is what has changed. Yeah. The meetings now are more virtual. Yeah, they are Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, Zoom has, I know. Zoom, Zoom has Zoom. just hit it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom started off, I think, with 500 people. Now I think they have... Uh, I'm told now there are about 5 million exactly. people on Zoom. My son was telling me anybody who bought shares with Zoom is doing very well right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So now we have to arrange those meetings on Zoom. As long as you're somewhere where you can be seen and you can be heard, you're good to go. Okay. Yeah. So that's what has changed. Okay. These are, are easier. It's made it, um, we, some, some of us are thinking it's much easier because now I don't have to, to do the, mm. the two hours on the road mm. and two hours back. I can just be ready for the meeting, do it, and then go back to my house chores. Mm. Yeah. Sheila, do you think we were very wasteful pre-COVID? Today, when I look back at the amount of time I wasted, uh, to be honest, go to work, uh, greeted everybody, that took like 30 minutes. Then it was time for tea. Then we stopped. We made tea. We ate with manda the Mandazi woman <laughs> and the egg woman would come. We'd drink tea and eat <laughs> eggs. Another 35 minutes. Then we would be late for a meeting. <laughs> then we would have another meeting. I mean, do you know there are times, let me be honest, there are times you'd go to work, work for, work to lunchtime, maybe. Yeah. So 9 to maybe 12. Yeah. 
we were then would have lunch then yeah. we'd prepare to go for a meeting at two o'clock maybe in another location yeah. we would drive there for yeah. an hour because the meeting was three then we would go there have the meeting until 4 30 and then we'd go home yeah Honestly speaking, let me just speak for myself, and I know most of us are, are victims of that. I would actually get to the office. I have to go to the kitchen to get a cup of tea. Yes. I have to tell that um, the kitchen mama, yeah. say hi, how yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Meet a few colleagues there and there. And like you said, buy a few mandazis. Then by the time I'm getting to my office, I've already like used up 45 minutes. Yes. Then I look at my shoes. Oh, I need to go and touch, mm. do a few touch-ups mm. and, and check myself. So I go to the bathroom. That's another 15 to 30 minutes. By the time I'm settling at my desk, I have wasted uh, like two hours. That's the true, company isn't it? Time. And that's a fact. Then, uh, you see now I have my to-do list. Yes. I normally get in and do my to-do list. Then someone calls and says, oh, you have uh, some guest has come yes. to see you. Yes. Someone from Shags. Yes. So I can't, I can't, I have to go and say hi. So that's another one hour down. By the time I, I, I'm going back to sit and settle at my desk, it's already lunchtime. I have to eat, Pauline. Yes. So again, I go, yeah. warm my food, yeah. eat, then touch base with people. Yeah. By the time I'm sitting down, honestly, it's too hot to work. Mm -hmm. And that's how the environment in my off, uh, at where I work is. Yeah. It's too hot to work. So we just decide to sip water and yeah. chat yeah. away. Then it's time to go back to go to go home. Wow. That is how it was. Yeah. Yeah. So we were not very productive. I was, we were not productive. Let's be honest. Let's, let's just, be honest. Let's say to say the truth. Two, really? My boss has had We were not productive. <laughs> I know. We were not very productive. No, we Today, however, I think the wonderful thing about today is 6 o'clock meeting. Awesome. There's no mo moving. Yes. Yeah. I yes. open my computer. Yes. I put on my Zoom link. Yes. The meeting lasts to whatever time. I look. I, to be honest, today, if my boss wanted to count how many hours I'm putting in, yes. they can know. They can know. Isn't it? It is now doable. It's now doable. Yeah, we're actually doing that with the IT team. Uh -huh. it's, you can actually punch in. Mm -hmm. It shows you the number of hours. For example, my boss, he gets into the computer at around 4, 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. So by 10 a.m., he's done most of the work. Wow. And now he can actually, he, his time is free. He yeah. frees up his time. Yeah. So it has made us be more flexible, more productive. There are people who are morning people. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you're someone who wakes up at 3 a.m., mm -hmm. if you can wake up at 3 a.m. and do most of your work, mm -hmm. then that means you free up time that you can do something else. You can do a side hustle. Yeah. So it's getting, we are getting more efficient, yeah. effective, and we, we are now discovering that we have other skills that we can, yeah. we can actually get money for yeah. other streams of income how do you think this will change contracts because I think I think the future of contracting people uh, is going to change as yeah. a HR practitioner what do you think is going to change now a lot is going to change mm -hmm. uh, right now uh, as I speak we've even asked people in our offices to and I've spoken to a few other HR practitioners mm -hmm. like me we've asked people to now have a look at their JDs mm -hmm. so we are looking at the JD before COVID looking at the JD during COVID, what tasks were you doing and will you be doing? So now we are sitting down and asking you, for example, Pauline, what were you doing before COVID? So uh, JD, uh, let me clarify, JD does his job description. <laughs> <Ooh -wee>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are looking at the job description and saying, before you would come in, you would pick the phone, you would make a few calls, maybe you would, uh, you would, uh, type a few emails, etc. So now what are, are we, what is going to change? Mm -hmm. So definitely the job descriptions are going to change. We are definitely going to have discussions like now you are taking eight hours. Mm -hmm. So this work that has changed is now taking you two hours. Because wow. we, we also have a system that we can time yeah. how long it takes to do work. Yeah. So work that maybe has been taking you eight hours is able to take two hours. So we can have that discussion and ask you, honestly, Pauline, maybe we should move into consultancy. Yeah. We should move into you being a consultant instead of a fully paid, a full-time paid worker. And then we free up your space. And then now you can get your other skills uh, getting you in some money. We mm -hmm. free up some time for mm -hmm. you. Because um, as much as I know some of us enjoyed the, the time we were having in the office, the free time, mm. other people were feeling frustrated. It's true. Yeah. So if you're that kind of person who is thinking, maybe this time I would have done something mm. else. Maybe I would have uh, made, a, made, a, mm. made up a sweater or mm. I, I would have knitted up or a sweater. Or some of us even had, uh, had we had uh, mpango candles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now you can, you can <laughs> run to your hustle. Yes. You, you, can, yes. Yeah. you can run to your hustle and do it and get back and 
have maybe in a day you'll have done three hustles yes something that was not possible okay so there's also a positive look to it so now the hr people are i'm sure are very happy because you're saving money but what about uh, the when you talk to the people who are employed how do they take this information it, it's not being taken well yeah. there's a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. there's a lot of um resentment in fact uh Every time we call someone, mm -hmm. you hear people, they've already tensed up. So there's a lot of tension. People are waiting to be told now, you, we, we no longer need you, mm -hmm. your job is no longer required, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of tension, mm -hmm. and there's, so people are agitated. Mm -hmm. It's not a good space at the moment uh, for the HR people. Mm -hmm. And we are actually sending many more and more people to for counseling sessions. Yeah. Yeah, we've had to to actually have people just go and and just talk about mm. how they are feeling, what is going on in their families. Because at the same thing that is up happening in the office yeah. is definitely being replicated at home. Okay. Yeah. Sheila, do you think that as as Kenyans we we had been too comfortable being employed? <laughs> Were we too comfortable doing the bare minimum? And because what for me has been the thing about COVID is. I think the shocker that being employed uh, does not mean that I was actually productive. Yes. Is it that maybe we we were too comfortable? Once you got a job, yeah. you if you showed up, yeah. you were very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So today you realize that the job you call a full-time job is actually, you actually work two hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you give your employer. That's what you actually give your yes, employer. Yes. Well, what do you think about that? Yes, that's, that was what we had. And I think it was a culture. Yeah. that was there and it's no one's mistake it's mm -hmm. something that was set up you were just come and you know sometimes the employers also had the have, have a part to play in mm -hmm. it because you are i have finished what i was doing but you just told you sit is it time it's not five yet mm -hmm. so you had to sit at your desk until five mm -hmm. so you had to look for something to while away the time yeah. so yeah it is something that you were comfortable with we were comfortable with just going into the office and leaving it then you come home and you're like oh, i've done a whole day's work and yet honestly speaking you have actually done uh, two hours work. Okay. Yeah. So my other question is, there's a lot of careers that are going to go away. Yeah. Um, just because, um, because of the times. I think uh, times will demand that some, some careers. Say, for example, an office that was perhaps a physical office has decided to, to, to become virtual. Yeah. So immediately there are several people who just disappear. Mm -hmm. A caretaker disappears. Yeah. A cleaning lady disappears. Yes, yes. The person who cooks tea has disappeared. Yes. All in one breath. Eh? Yes. Uh, the receptionist has disappeared. Yeah. There's nothing to be receptioned yeah, about. about. And perhaps an office that had 10 people, maybe over scales 50%, down to, scales yeah. down to five people. Yes. Um, so what are some of the careers that you think immediately that people need to start thinking about their futures? Yeah, uh, to be honest, Pauline, and that's unfortunate, I would say the administrative skills, the ones that are repetitive, the ones that can be, they can be replaced. Someone can do them on your own. Those are the administrative skills. Those are definitely uh, skills that are, or jobs that you really need to sit down and think, what can I add or what can I pair that mm -hmm. with? Uh, there are jobs like in the, in the food industry, mm -hmm. the food services, now people are even scared to go mm -hmm. eat out or anything. They are just eating in-house. There is the accommodation services. Mm -hmm. The hotels are no longer mm -hmm. being in use. And also the manufacturing, mm -hmm. to, be, uh, to be honest. The manufacturing industry is also being affected because people are now thinking uh, virtual. People are thinking to order things mm -hmm. online, etc. So those are the careers that for now, uh, if you are in that career, you should seriously just sit down and ask yourself, where am I going? What should I do? Etc. Wow. Yeah, because if it's a career that has that repetitive, uh, repetitive action to it, that means it can be replaced by a robot or can we say bots? Mm. That's where it, uh, uh, artificial intelligence comes in. If it's mostly to do with uh, what is it called? Something that can be a machine can just copy and repeat it and, and do it. Like accounts jobs, actually accountants. Some, there's most of what they do mm -hmm. is repetitive. Mm -hmm. So it's something that can be done by a machine. So if you're in that kind of uh, career, it's just good to have a sit down, have a, mm -hmm. a conversation with yourself, mm -hmm. have a conversation with a career counselor mm -hmm. and think of the best way to approach your future. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you think that also some of uh, we, the, the flip side of this COVID discussion has, I have never seen people invent the way they've inno invented, yeah. innovate the way they've innovated. I've never seen such innovation. Even from food. Yes. I mean, people are selling food, people are selling yes. things, people are selling burgers. I mean, people have become innovative. Yes. So perhaps maybe besides, maybe we were we were being silly sitting in offices doing repetitive yeah. work because we were not courageous enough to go out and, and, yeah. and be creative yeah. and do things. What do you think about yeah. that? That has, has, has shown up a lot. Mm -hmm. So people have become uh, innovative mm -hmm. because now you are thinking in a specific way. Now you have been forced because of the crisis to start thinking, okay, what can I do? Who, who can I? I'm very good at this. Let me do this. I'm good at making hair. Let me make hair. I'm good at cooking. Maybe I should carry some food and mm -hmm. distribute to so and so. Mm -hmm. So it has made us innovative. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. It has made people discover skills that they never knew they had. So that's a good thing as well. So up from being that one one minded person you just think this is all i can do and i'm good at it now you are, you are discovering that there are so many things you can do with mm -hmm. your hands there are so many things you can do in fact some of us are even discovering that we are actually creative mm. things that we didn't know we were okay. so that's that has has changed a lot i'm i'm having conversations with people saying okay this is what i do now i'm making hair mm -hmm. i'm able to to go buy food and sell you know so it has it has just opened up another uh people are now thinking out, outside mm. the, bo the box mm. if i should say so okay. yeah how do okay so these, to be honest, Sheila, there was stigma associated with having many jobs. Yeah. So I remember uh, maybe the millennials are a bit different from us, yeah. but we were sort of discouraged from being too wild. You know, yeah. we were told <laughs> you can have maybe one small business mm, on the side, but don't, you can't do, <laughs> you can't do everything. Yeah. You know, you have to mm. stick on a job, become mm. permanent, pensionable, mm. kazi, vizuri. Then uh, maybe you can have one little thing mm. on the side and then eventually you retire, you go and, and die. just die. Yeah, that yeah. was the big idea. What is now the new way, the new way of thinking? Yeah, the new way of thinking is use your hands, use your mind, just explore everything. Take the risk. Start something, it's, you know, something I've learned the other day is just feel forward. Mm. Start something, it doesn't work, you start another one. By the time you're getting to the five, sixth hustle, you'll be, you, in fact, you can even be an expert on what fails. You know, <laughs> you can be a consultant <laughs> yes. of, on the, what does not work. Or professors that don't work. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So that, that is what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Now we are, it is a good thing. Yeah. And it is the best way to go. Yeah. Yeah. So innovate, innovate. Innovate, innovate. Ask yourself some, have those questions. Who am I? What do I like doing? Where would I like to be? What is it that every time you sat, you know the way I can sit and tell, Pauline, you're very good at talking. Mm. You should be, you mm. should be doing, a, mm. you should have a, a, mm. a show. You know, such things. There are so many things people have been throwing in your, mm. in, in your way. Well, that people you have been have telling taken. me that maybe I should become a comedian. I you know. see, exactly. Know. You know. I'm, I'm now <laughs> reaching out to Kengangi. Chachi. Pauline, please do. Please do. You know, I can you, make a few more shows. Yes. That means people have seen something in you. Okay. And I've taken that seriously as well. Because I remember growing up, people tell me, you're very good at cooking. Why mm. don't you cook? Yeah. You're very good at making hair. Why don't you make hair? Yeah. So now, just sit down and start listening. Listening to other people. What are they saying? Start learning new skills. Mm. Pair up the skills that you have with something mm. else. If it's a, a skill that is uh, maybe administrative, what can you pair yeah. it up with yeah. like a technical skill yeah. that can make it more marketable? Because now, as, I, as you said with the new millennials, we are not looking at someone who is only good at one thing. Mm. We are like, how many things can you do? Mm. For example, in our office, that's what we are doing. We have very young people who we realize they can be the admin, they can also be the camera guy, they can also be the tea lady. They, they are doing so many things at one time and they are doing it so well. Actually, they can be the admin, then yes. they can be a tea lady. Yes. Then they can, then they can be a couple, because on different days you can yeah. do different things. You can be different things. Okay. Yeah. And then, and on Sunday they are, they can do something else. Exactly. That's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Do you pay them for each different task? No, we are not, because at the moment we've not changed our pay structure. Yeah. But with the new JD, yeah. now we, we we are sitting down and saying, okay, so what what now we are getting into 
what, what do you really love doing? Yeah. What is your passion? Yeah. So once we discover, oh, you also like doing, uh, uh, doing shows. So we write it down and see how you can fit into our uh, system. Okay. Then we, 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 we note them down and change your JD mm. and see now how can we pay for this mm. uh, depending on the income that we get. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay. What I think the other thing is what attitudes should we adopt? Mm. I think we were fairly inflexible. Yes. Isn't it? There was a lot of you see Kaziangu. Yeah. Isn't it? Uh, I think COVID has now shown us Kaziote ni yetu. <laughs> so what kind of attitudes are HR looking for now? Um, at the moment, we are looking at people who can volunteer, volunteer to learn new skills. Mm. Because now the minute you talk about wanting to be paid, we tend to, to mm. be a bit... Uh, we are not up to it. Mm. So volunteer to learn new skills. Mm. We're looking at people who, if you're told today, you'll not be seated at the office, mm. today let's go out in the field. Mm. That is the kind of attitude we're looking at. People who are open to new ideas, people who are open to new things, people who are even open to be told that your job is no longer needed, mm. that it is redundant. So we can sit down and say, okay, what is the way forward? How can we work with you so that if you're going into the new phase of life, you can, you can be helped? And I, and I think that is possible because if uh, an employee and the employer can sit down and work out a way, an exit strategy, where we still support you even as you go out, because you know now this is a relationship mm -hmm. kind of thing, because now when you get out, we could still partner and have you coming back. So, so you're looking for people who are open to collaborations, yes. partnerships, yes. Uh, taking jobs, risks, yeah. taking risks. Yes. Is it also that and even trying out things that they think they are not good at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it, are you also looking for people who care about your business? Because I think this is my other point. We mm. never cared about the business yes. of the people, isn't yes. it? Indeed. So we kind of showed up, and then at the end of the month, we were like, "Where? Yeah. Where's I don't my know pay? You mean Mr. Kujua machine? I boss. came. <laughs> Me, I came to work. Just yes. Are we looking for people? So we are looking for people who are more. They care about the bottom yes. line. They are partners yeah. more than employees. Mm. Is, that, is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. We even uh, are looking for someone who can come and say, look, I don't need to work this many hours. I would like to step out of the, uh, the, the, the payroll. Then you just pay me for this particular job that I'm doing. Yeah. Then you release that person. And you see, like if that person steps out and yet what they are going to do could be something that you need for your organization. So you see, it's easier to work with such yeah, a person yeah. because number one, they already saw ahead and thought, I don't need to burden you with uh, me being there and mm -hmm. expecting a pay. I can actually just remove myself mm -hmm. and go and do something mm -hmm. else. That's the kind of attitude we would really appreciate mm -hmm. from from people you work with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like the new workplace is going to be very different. So different. So my thought is, what about people who've been working for a very long time and cannot adjust? What will happen to them? Yani waze. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what will happen to them? And I think Uze, mm. can I say this, Sheila? Uze is, is, is a mental condition. Yes. There are some young people who are completely inflexible, they mm. are set in cement mm. and they will not move. Mm. There's some older people who are very flexible, yeah. who are very robust to yeah. see forward. So what happens to you if you are not able to get onto the new bus? If you don't get onto the new bus, you are those people who had rather retire and die. But if you are flexible enough, you can use this, you know, if you've been working for 10 years, that means there's something you're very good at doing. Mm. Pauline, each and every one of us has something that we are very good at doing. From talking, uh, there, there are people who are even good at counseling mm. and they're in the office. Mm. Yeah, so you start discovering yourself and you can be able to give back to the society. Okay. So if you're inflexible, you might suffer. You might just mm. have to like you said, go to Shanks, yeah. retire, and become, and, a and become a farmer. And even Which is still not a, a bad thing. Yes, it's a, it's a profession. Yeah, because people will always eat. Mm. So just have a, that, like I said, have a conversation with yourself and ask yourself, I, what sort of a person am I? Yeah. Who, are, who am I really? Yeah. And where do I want to go? What is my past purpose? The minute you sit down and discover that, then you can reach out. Mm. There are people right now, there are very many career counselors. They are doing, most of them are doing this free of charge. Mm. You can reach out to them let them evaluate you do an analysis a sort of analysis with yourself the strengths the weaknesses you have the opportunities that are available the threats that way you'll be able now to see yourself moving forward okay 
that is the best way to go. Okay. At whichever age you are, you can still make it. There's one of these guys, I think, he, he got he got his uh, breakthrough at 65 years. Yeah, so, the guy who invented Kentucky Fried exactly, Chicken. Exactly, yeah. yeah. He got his breakthrough at 65 years. So I never think that it's, uh, it's too late or you can be too rigid. You can always have a change of mind. Okay. Yeah. Sheila, we have to go into a break. We'll be coming back. Mm. Um, and we'll be joined by Maureen. She's yes. from St. John Omi. Okay. We want to talk about what, the, what kind of branding mm. do you bring? What kind of branding, personal branding now? Because it seems to me, COVID has now taught us to have personal responsibility, yes. isn't it? <laughs> yes. I think we were told yes. it is now you're on your own. <laughs> I think even employers mm. are beginning to say, I can no longer carry you on my yes. back. You are on your own. Yeah, take responsibility. You have to take personal responsibility. Yes. So we want to come back and talk about what does that look like? Mm. Because I think we were carry, we've been carried along for a long time. Yeah. And it's time now we stood up on our own two mm. feet. Yeah? So we are going into a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies. We were talking about the future of work and we were with Sheila. Sheila, thank you very much. Yeah. You've been able to break down the future of work for us. And I welcome Maureen. Thank you. From Sentonomy. Thank you so much. Maureen, Pauline. we've had so much about Sentonomy. Could you tell us a little bit about who you are and what Sentonomy is all about? Okay, great. Sentonomy is about uh, helping purposeful people create wealth in whatever area of their life. Wow. That means if you're an entrepreneur, we'll help you just scale up your business so that you're able to create wealth. If you're a person who earns money and you realize, I, there's something, there's a problem with my money, how I manage my money, and I don't know where to put my money, and I'm also thinking of how do I protect my money. So we train people on personal finance. Um, so basically through a program called Sentonomy 101, and then we have Career Hub. So we look at you as an employed person and uh, just how best do you package yourself to create value and Thank create you. wealth yes okay so so besides money you are now looking at careers yes yes so you are very useful for this conversation that we are about to have so Sheila has just told us in the new world order that is coming mm -hmm. because of two things and I think basically purely because of artificial um, the, the world of robots mm. If you are working in a job where you do repetitive work, yes. like recently, I think we all saw the new car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the robot, job, the, the, the car with no driver. Mm -hmm. That's the future. That's really, in five years from now, there will be cars that you don't need to drive. Mm -hmm. So if you're a driver today, that's your main job, you have to start thinking, eh, the days when there are no drivers required, what will happen? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So how do we start to take responsibility for our own careers? I think that's my first question to you, because I think for a long time we've allowed ourselves to drift with what was available. Mm -hmm. But I think now we have to really take charge of our own careers. All right, very good question. Um, it is important to realize that God has created us in very unique ways. And um, even as we were growing up, we realized that our parents, the environment really shaped what we have become today. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of us who've already, of course, advanced in age. Um, I'm very proud of where I am, yes. Uh, and Please, that let's has really let's not talk about age on this show. <laughs> Pauline, it is the grace age, of God. Age, age is never discussed on this show. I'm proud. You I'm never proud of ask it. Men about their ages. She likes it too. It's true. Yeah, we are all sixteen on oh, this right. show. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. and I'm proud to be sixteen. <laughs> So what happens, most of the qualities and skills or probably giftings and talents that we were created with never function at mm. some point. And um, one thing that I'd encourage guys is just to s just have a sit down, have a meeting with yourselves and just ask themselves, am I really doing what I was created for? And how do you know that? Are you happy doing whatever you're doing? That's where the first thing begins. Because if you love doing what you're doing, even if, if the robots came in, you will still be doing it and you'll be good at it. Of course, apart from just adding knowledge, sharpening the skills that you have, sharpening the gifts that you have, it is important to identify what do you love doing. Wow. Yes. So the first thing, what do I love to do? Mm. Yes. Okay. So... Let me give you a typical example. Mm -hmm. So I love to be a musician, mm -hmm. but there's no money in music, mm -hmm. or so I've had. Yes. So because there's no money in music, mm -hmm. uh, I am now um, an administrative assistant mm -hmm. in an office somewhere mm -hmm. where I spend most of my working time, mm -hmm. and so I'll never be able to pursue my music. Mm -hmm. um, how do I begin to make the shift? All right. Wherever you are, you're learning. 
everywhere you're placed is a learning point. So what are you learning with administrative skills? Because remember, as much as a door might open today for you to become a musician, you'll still need those skills, mm -hmm. to be very honest. Um, making a shift is not the problem because opportunities are always around us. And if they are not, create them. Because oh, wow. we were created to create. Mm. So create those opportunities. With the administrative skills that you have already garnered, you have learned over mm. the years, it is very easy for you to make the shift. The other thing would be, of course, guys think there are no opportunities because there's no <laughs> enough money for mm. that. How much are you able to keep aside? If you really value music, how much are you able to keep aside? And we're not saying, uh, go rant to your HR and tell mm. them, no, you know what, I need a pay rise because for me to be able to be happy here, I need to be delivering on what? On my own personal goals. That is, if you're able to save money on lunch, for example, because I know some of, mu some of the musicians who've decided to just save up mm -hmm. on lunch money, they're like, I will carry a snack every day to work. Mm -hmm. So if my lunch was costing me about 250 bob, at the end of the month, that's about um, almost 9,000 shillings. I can record a, mu a track. Yes, you can record a every, track. Every month I can record a track, and, you know and by the end I can have an yeah. album, yeah? Mm -hmm. And do you know how Centonomy started? Mm -hmm. Washeke started saving 300 bob a day for her lunch money. At the end of the year, it was 108 shillings, and she realized, oh, since I love traveling, and where I've been working, I've not been able to travel because of what I'm earning, then this 108 shillings, is enough for me to go for a holiday. 108,000. Wow. Yes, yes. So the idea is, yes, you're working as an administration. Garner those skills. Because the day you start producing your music, you'll still need the very, very skills yeah. to be able to manage the people that you'll be working with. Because admin is about managing people. Yeah. Yes. Managing people and managing resources. Exactly. And, so, uh, and managing time. Yeah. And yes, as a yes, musician, that you will need to know how mm. to manage the, the I thing. totally agree. I, I love what you've just said. Mm. I don't know what you think about this, Sheila opportunities present themselves it's just that they pre don't present themselves how we like them to present mm. themselves so maybe i'm an administrator mm -hmm. and i get invited for a gig yeah. but i'm told there's no payment mm -hmm. or i see a gig even in church yes. or somewhere and i walk up instead of walking up to the person and saying you know i'm a, I'm a musician would mm. you like me to come and perform mm -hmm. the person will probably say you are not on the rotor so you yeah. you can perform but we won't mm. pay you yes. our immediate reaction is to say if you are not paying me and you're paying, you're paying, uh, you know, some big musician 200,000, I cannot perform mm. because you're using me. By the way, there's a lot of that going mm. around. What do you, what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah, and that gets me back to that. Uh, I like what you said, Maureen, mm. and it makes a lot of sense when you say that be creative, be creative using the skill that you have to go where you want to go. That is where volunteering comes mm. in. Volunteer in that space because as you volunteer, I keep telling my daughter, that's actually going to college without paying the school fees. Mm -hmm. You're actually learning and you're not paying. So volunteer, learn the skill. Don't, don't shy away from that. And with time, because of your attitude, next time someone will need you there. Someone will be like, oh, there's a gap here. Let's use you. So that's where you would come in. In and fact, like you said, God opens those opportunities yeah, for us to yeah, use them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think for, uh, for many HR people, normally you will get an intern, and depending on how they perform, uh, you either let them stay on or they go away. Yes. And you know, Pauline, what the secret is? Mm -hmm. And you said it, attitude. Mm -hmm. Attitude will open doors that you will never, ever imagine. There's a guy we work with, and I just, he's an, he's an intern. I see the way he works. I see the way that guy gives himself, he, he gives his, his time, his resources. He's always there. He's never complaining. And if I was to sit down with him and just, think, just find out, if I wanted to find out what drives him, I'm sure he has a very good goal. Because if you have the right attitude, you will learn, number one. Number two, you will draw the right people towards you. Number three, people will be willing to help you mm. learn and acquire new skills. Mm. So the, f the idea is just have the right attitude and give. There's mm -hmm. one statement that's <laughs> that uh, one of our trainers keeps on repeating. What to pay away. Mm -hmm. It means if you have it, give mm -hmm. it. You will grow yourself to a point of people will want now to pay you because you'll have sharpened your skills. Because with time, you'll not be that musician that stood up one day and sang in a backup and you're like, ah, I mm -hmm. can't get the keys. It gets to a point to become very perfect at what mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. So the idea is have the right attitude and volunteer. Thank you for that. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So as we talk about personal branding, what are some of the key things in your mind that determine whether you are a good brand as a human being or not? Branding is very critical. Initially, it was used by products yeah. and um, 
of course, people on social yeah. media yeah. pages, guys have yeah. used branding for a very long time, but it is important to realize that branding is very close, especially, it's very close home if you're employed, if you're mm -hmm. in business, it's very close. Why, why I say this is because you are, people need to identify you mm -hmm. in a certain way, and that is what branding is. Okay. What do you stand for? And one of the things that you need to realize is to want, you, want, you want to start building your brand, you need to start thinking in terms of uh, what do people say about mm -hmm. me? What value do I have to give? What is my value preposition as a so person? So you have to, first of all, you said something very critical. Mm. Allow me to stop you. That's okay. You have to do an audit. Yeah. You have to ask, oh. ask people, just tell me, you know, it may injure your heart. Yes. Yeah. But tell me, what do you think about me? You are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Isn't Correct. it? Yes. You have to do an audit. Yeah. Because even brands do audits. They do. So you have to do an audit with other people. Mm. Yes to know what people think about you. Even if, if you're a housewife yes. and you had a nanny in the house, it is important for you to realize, w to know what they think about you. Yeah. Humble yourself and just ask, what do you think Mama Israel, for example? What do you think Mama Israel is? Yeah. Yeah. That way you'll start, because they'll give you an honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Having an op honest opinion about you helps you understand where you are. Therefore, you're, you're able to start building yourself from wherever you okay. are. So number one is, of course, get to know what people are saying about you. If it is your boss, if it is your immediate line manager, gather courage, go and ask them, what do you think, what do you think I am? What do you think I offer? Hearing is very, hearing what people say about you is very important. Wow. Then number two, you need to understand the value that you're offering. What is your value preparation, preposition? Yes, I'm a marketer, that's what I do. I'm the head of um, the personal finance, fi financial management program and you can tell they're passionate about mm -hmm. numbers and money. And um, apart from that, am I able to go and speak about the organization mm -hmm. in such a show, for example? Mm -hmm. I'm adding value. Mm -hmm. I'm adding value because I'm very good at speaking. I'm, I'm a very bubbly person. Mm -hmm. I can MC, for example. When we have events at our place of work, we don't have to go looking for an MC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the MC. I will I'll volunteer and yeah. I'll be very good to volunteer. Yes. That's yes. really cool, yeah. Yes. I know there's nothing as beautiful as hearing, as knowing that the CEO of the organization knows your name wow. and knows that we can always depend rely. on wow. yeah. or rely on yeah. Maureen to do so and so. Yeah. So it is after you identify with other people, what people are saying about mm. you, understand your value. What you're bringing to the mm. table. What am I bringing to the table? Mm. And then the other thing is, please understand, get to know your weaknesses because there are things that will motivate you and there are things that will not motivate you. If you are not a numbers person, clearly don't go frustrate yourself mm. Trying, working so hard, going to get a certificate in accounts because mm. uh, you want to please everybody. Don't do that. Do what will help you shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just stand out in that area that you're good at. Mm -hmm. One of my strengths is talking to people. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm very good on the phone and <laughs> convincing guys. So I don't struggle with, A, okay, when, they, when it comes to collecting balances, ah, ah please forgive me because mm -hmm. I don't know how to tell somebody, if you mm -hmm. don't pay, mm -hmm. I will not send you the link to mm -hmm. class. Yeah, I'm not good at that. So mm -hmm. I'll concentrate with what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. And that way I'll be known for doing Which that. At, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then apart from that, just build your skills. Yeah. Build your skills. For example, if I'm a very good orator and I've realized, oh, these are the areas that I need to work yeah. on, why can't I approach Pauline yeah. and tell her, Pauline, you know, can't you just train me in these yeah. things? Yeah. Or can I, sometimes getting you might be a problem. I can't even watch you. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of resources online that mm -hmm. you can sit down and watch. One of my, my, um, one of my mentors is Oprah Winfrey. Oh, she's my By mentor God's too. grace, yeah. I, I will meet her one day you because will. of course it is Amen. good to, to, to rely <laughs> yes. on hope, yes. Mm -hmm. But I keep on watching her. I like the way she speaks. I like the way she brings out ideas. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way she carries yeah. out mm -hmm. interviews. I really admire that. So listening to her really helps me. Something that people don't like, again, is identify, don't know about, is identifying your audience. Mm -hmm. If you're my HR mm -hmm. and I want a promotion mm -hmm. from you, hi, my goodness, you will see me every day mm -hmm. of your life. Because I'll make sure I need to know what her weaknesses are, yeah. not to manipulate, mm. but to make sure I'm in her good books mm. for God's sake. Mm. I'm in her good books. That's so that's what your name pops in my head. Any time. Some of us, we are so bad at, uh, at being top of mind. Mm. We like mm. to be part of the crowd. That's why we never get promoted. Mm. And we, that's do problem. you know the funny thing about, about this, 
conversation is we hate the people mm -hmm. who are actually top of mind to the mm -hmm. boss. There's somebody who's top of mind to the boss. Mm -hmm. And so we sit at the canteen or the cafeteria yes. and we bad mouth them, isn't it? Look at her. Yeah. She wants to be liked yeah. by the boss. Mm -hmm. And that person actually literally mm -hmm. progresses. It's true. While you continue with the crowd mm -hmm. making noise and yeah. being mean yeah. and, and That's having funny. a bad attitude mm -hmm. at work. And, and there's nothing wrong with you um, knowing who your target is. If yeah. Your target is your yeah. boss. They're the, one who, they're the ones who pay you. Yeah. For God's sake, they're the people who you should be making happy. Yeah. Being intentional. Totally yeah, yeah, be intentional about yes. making them yes. happy. Yes. Yes. I mean, the guys who are at the cafeteria don't pay your salary. No, they don't. And they won't. They don't care. And, yeah. you, know, and you know, Pauline, part of bad mouthing is also publicity in yes. a way. Yes. Because yes. we see that happening in, mm. in, our, in, our, in our, um, probably in politics yeah. or maybe... Um, because sometimes you'll hear, eh, so-and-so is not very good at this. And that's how you get to hear their name. Mm. That's how you get to hear their name. So if people are bad-mouthing you, you keep, because you have goals again. Remember, yes. you have goals. Yes. You have a goal yeah. to meet. Forget about what they're saying. They'll keep on talking, but they will see you rising. And mm. one day, they'll humble themselves enough to come and ask you, how did you get there? Yeah. Because it's very easy for people to say nowadays in the office, to say that people are sleeping around. Mm. Maureen got the, thank God your office is, is you know, I'm sure your CEO is a woman. This, no, he's yeah. a man. Oh, well, okay, he's, a man. A man. he's a man, yes, okay. he's a man. And he's very an honorable man mm. who loves his family. Yeah. But the thing is, and you know, at St. Antonio, what, what happens? The first time I joined the organization, I was told, you know what? Um, this is the program. We want you to manage. Manage it. Think of how you'll grow it. Mm. We don't know. But what we'll be wanting to see at the end of every season is the numbers that are coming into class. Wow. Mm. So you're given an opportunity to be creative. You're mm -hmm. given an opportunity to use what you have. Mm -hmm. You're told, even if you're able to get somebody, uh, an, uh, an interview in BBC, go. Mm -hmm. Go, we will support you. You just go and do it. Nobody will stop you. At the end of the day, we just want to see numbers in class. And in the process, we have grown. Mm -hmm. We have grown. And we like the fact that we are at St. because it allows you to be creative around what you've been given. Mm -hmm. You will never be given a JD at, oh, okay, fine. You report at In fact, the other day, my boss asked, told us in a meeting, you will never find me asking you why, why did you report to the office at mm -hmm. 9.30. Because we have very flexible hours. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are working from home. Nobody is monitoring our time. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to wake up, if you're a morning person, because that's the other thing, because mm. times are changing, yeah. mm. and the people who are coming on board again to work are very creative, the creative minds. Mm. So their times are very creative. They're very active in the morning. So they'll do their work perfectly well. In the afternoon, after four hours, we are done. Yeah. That is me. Difficult. There are people who yeah. start working at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And from 3 p.m. to 5, they will do a lot of work and mm. excellent work. Mm. So that's the other thing. So just identify where your strengths are, mm. when are my best, when is my environment, how does my environment look like, mm. how do I work to ensure that my environment mm. fits or suits my productivity, and then also always remember your goal. The idea is not stepping on people. The idea is not stepping on people, because again, you need to work with people. Yeah, you always need to work with people. Yeah. EQ is also another way of just helping you out. I actually wanted to ask you about that. This is a, there's a new word. Yes. Yeah, there's a new word in town. Mm -hmm. First, it used to be, what was the first one? So this one is called uh, EQ. Yes. Before that, what was the one, the one before? IQ. IQ. Yes. There was IQ. Now mm. it is EQ. Mm. EQ. Could you tell us what EQ is? Emotional intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> This is a skill. It's actually a skill mm -hmm. that you learn that helps you relate with people around you better. Okay. If you're that person who sparks quickly, mm -hmm. you should need to ask yourself questions. Mm -hmm. You need to give yourself a period. In fact, this is what we were told during a training that mm -hmm. we went through. And Centonum is actually doing the training right now. This is the first season we are doing that particular training. And we are told... I saw it. I yes, saw it. Yes. On and the yeah. first class started on Tuesday, apparently. Mm -hmm. And I think there's another class happening today. Mm -hmm. So before you react, take a breath of about six seconds before you say anything. Just take six seconds. Six seconds, six, six seconds is actually quite long when it's you're angry. Time, yeah. <laughs> it is a long time. But if you're able to practice and just breathe in, mm -hmm. breathe out, before you say anything. Because everything that you say has a consequence. Yeah. And words cannot be taken, taken back. back. They can never be taken back. So think about what you're going to say because re the relationships at work, mm -hmm. you don't have to be friends with everyone, mm -hmm. but you have to like each other mm -hmm. in order for you to be productive mm -hmm. because we work as teams. Mm -hmm. So EQ is very important. Just the idea of if I reacted like this, what mm -hmm. are the results? Mm -hmm. 
what will I gain if I say this and that? Mm -hmm. And also just this discussion that we had just during the break of mm -hmm. just sitting down and asking you a, quest a question like, why did this person react the way yeah, they yeah, reacted? Yeah. Really would really important. save you a lot. Yeah. Yes. Sheila, what are you hearing as a HR? Mambo ni mingi hapa. Yes, yes. I, I'm <laughs> learning a lot. Well, the first thing that I heard Maureen said, and it really hit me, was when she talked about personal branding, mm. when she just started and said, identify what people say about yeah. you and yeah. who are you. Yeah. I remember Jesus asked his disciples, mm. who mm. do people, people say, say that I, I am? am? So for me, if Jesus can ask that question, who do people say that I am, really resonates with what you're mm. saying. And we have never really thought about personal branding in mm. terms of HR. Mm. So it's uh, when, when we, uh, personal branding is talked about, we think of it in the marketing mm. and, you know, but it's important because as you were speaking, I, would, I was already, my mind was looking at the people I work mm. with and I'm like, this person is actually a brand. This is a person is a brand. When we talk about so-and-so, we are like, this is a very good communicator. Mm. When we talk about so-and-so, we are like, no, send her to go and cancel so-and-so. So those people have already, already brands. Mm. And now I am now looking at them as brands. Mm. So that really helped as well. Amazing. So you see, it's really interlocked. Mm. And even when you talk about emotional intelligence, mm. right now that is very key. Mm. That is very important in our, in, our, mm. in our office right now. I have to see how I am supposed to talk to how am I supposed to deal with you because right now as I was telling Pauline people are anxious mm. people are, are are tense people are thinking do I have my job so emotional intelligence is something that I as a HR would need when dealing with people mm. it's something that I as a manager as a team member I will need if I need to go to the mm. next level mm. yeah what are some of the qualities of a brand like what are some of the things that allow you to build a, a, a brand um, eventually because that's really important I think we in marketing they are there and I think they still apply um, even when you're dealing with people consistency yes oh very key you have to keep on doing it until it becomes part of you and people have to know that if they give you a certain task you do it the same way exactly then the other thing just to describe what you've said is under promise and over deliver great Always under promise. And you know, there we, we have a tendency of going for an interview mm. and like, ah, I can work under pressure. Mm. Yes. Then when pressure comes, yeah. you have a melt, <laughs> you're melting, you're, you're melting. AAR will always be there to take you mm. to hospital yeah. for, you know, services because mm. you, you, you lose it. If you can under promise. And over deliver. And over deliver. You're on the right track okay. and be consistent at what you do. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. If you can't, you just can't. Yeah. If you're going to learn, and there are people I know, like um, I read a quote from Richard Branson some time back, and it was like, if somebody approached you today and they asked, "Are you able to do this?" If you, if you, you know, you know yourself very well, and you know you can do this thing. Richard Branson said, "Just say yes, I can deliver. Then go and do research." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go and do research. The other thing is make use of the social capital is a very important uh, part. Please, please tell us what social, social capital, capital is. Is making use of the, all the networks around you, mm. even in the office. There's somebody who's very good with doing those Excel. Mm. You know, yeah. a, a, a friend of mine who was a colleague, she moved on to a different organization. We didn't meet at Centonomy. Mm. This girl, whenever we'd sit in a meeting, the way she'd articulate issues, you're mm. like, I think I can do better mm. than that. Mm -hmm. But whenever she was doing her reports, they were so excellent. So I was like, hey, how do you manage to produce such good reports? She was like, I have a boyfriend who teaches me how to do Excel. Mm -hmm. Make use of the people mm -hmm. around you. If somebody is very good at Excel and you can learn, of course, for you to get a job, there's a level of, you know, of intelligence that you have. Go and learn. Keep on learning. Don't stop learning. Mm -hmm. People are still learning. I had a 75-year-old lady in class learning about money 75 year old when somebody else is retired back mm. at home thinking ah this is now the end of mm. of me mm. all i need to do is sit down and wait for my grandchildren to come and you no know, jump around this lady comes into class to learn about personal money management and i'm like what at 75 she's learning then keep on learning so keep on learning. yes be be teachable be the person who's open who mm. people know that you're yes, always open yes. to learning yes yes yes, in yes. Learning. yes sheila yes. i really want you to talk talk uh, speak into the idea of teams mm. for a long time we've worked as people mm -hmm. but i think the era of the individual is soon coming to an end mm. we're going to be working in teams a lot what are some of the things about how to work in a team 
the most important thing with the how to work with the team is to recognize your strengths and weaknesses mm. and just know I am not good at this, mm. acknowledge that, and now identify who in the team is good at that. Yeah. So that if I am not good at this and Pauline is good at it, yeah. I am able to let Pauline lead mm. and I will support. So every time you work in a team, acknowledge around yeah. the team who is good at this, who is not, mm -hmm. and then now everyone is able to get their, uh, their strengths mm. out. So it's very important for that, to be a team player mm. uh, and also to be able to speak into each other, mm. to support each other and say, mm. um, are you are not good at this, let mm. me do it, or let me sit with you until you get to mm. where you can be able to deliver. Yeah. 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 Anything about teams? Um, and this I think is the, the era of collaboration yes, and it mergers. Is, it is, it is. Uh, uh, it's about time people realize that you can never win alone. Yeah. yeah. It takes two to tango. It takes three, even a hundred to tango. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the ways that organizations can support their staff is always remind them of the objective. Mm -hmm. The overall objective of the organization. Mm -hmm. It's never about me. It's always about what are we here to achieve. Mm -hmm. If it's giving clients very good quality services, then let's do it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we'll win as a team. Because yeah. the moment we start having uh, yeah. different... Because the whole opinion. thing about... You, mm -hmm. you remember, we are coming from a place of silo operations. Yes. People clicks. cutting clicks. Mm -hmm. yes. People cutting each other's yeah. moves. You know exactly. that whole... There's yeah. a culture that we know. Mm -hmm. And so we are coming into a new culture where... For example, I work with a team of people to deliver on a certain project. Yeah. I know. I think there are about four or five of us in that team. Mm. None of us. We don't meet, but we talk. We, we use virtual media Amazing. and we deliver and we put things on SharePoint. So, do you, so I have been learning how to work in a team yeah. with people virtually from even other parts of the world. So that is a very interesting concept. Mm -hmm. So teamwork, collaborations, mergers, partnerships, mm -hmm. that's the era of the future. It yeah. is the era. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the future. Mm -hmm. So we are all going to have to be whatever, play very differently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told we've run out of time, ladies. Okay. Yeah, it's always sad when this happens. <laughs> I was just about to ask you about, um, we'll talk about this another day, but mm -hmm. for me it was also um, that all of us have blind spots. Mm -hmm. and that uh, we just that they are called blind because we don't see them yeah. Yeah. yeah and if you don't know your blind spots you're in trouble yeah yes. yeah but yeah. i'll save that for another day mm -hmm. so i'll call so you some, ladies back keep up the good work thank you for the future of work is changing it is changing yeah it, it is, is changing. changing so dadas um the future of work is changing we are probably going into a whole new world where artificial intelligence is going to become key. And so we have to start thinking about how we're we going to uh, rebrand and you know, um, upscale so that we, uh, we, br we bring new skills and new skill set and a new attitude to the workplace. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching us. As always, have a really productive week. Baraka. <laughs>